Brent, his staff, his team, uh, thought they played really good. We thought they would, um, and they did. I thought they, uh, thought they won a lot of scrimmage, um, especially in the, the, the first half. And, uh, their quarterback did a good job. So, a lot of respect to our fans, our, our, our crowd. Made a huge difference in the game. Uh, they probably got us a few uh, false starts there, which were really big for us. This was a really short week and a really tough uh, game plan week because we knew uh, their quarterback's capabilities and uh, you know he's he's been kind of sitting waiting in the in, in the weeds there for a, a couple weeks and uh, we we knew that he was getting healthy. Um, obviously, uh, he did a great job against NC State, uh, but didn't play the whole game. And tonight. Uh, he did play the whole game. He played really well and really physical. And this this rivalry is is good for our state, and that's what uh, Brett and I both shared before the game and after the game. And uh, no matter what anybody says, you know, publicly there's a mutual respect for me for the way uh, the physicality with which they play the game with and uh, the toughness. <coughs> I thought our guys played really hard and physical. Um, they had a good plan. And, they shrunk the game on us. We didn't get great possessions in the first half. I don't know how many we had, but I feel like the first one was a waste with a drop. The last one was really short where we had a long field goal because it was two minutes, and then there were maybe three drives in between that in which we did think to well. We, we turned the ball over, and we didn't get a fourth and uh, fourth and one. And that's the biggest difference in the game. They cashed in on their drives, and we didn't. Uh, and in the second half, we got a little rhythm going and did some good things. Um, obviously, the overtime was – uh, epic, I guess, eight, eight overtimes, and I don't know if you might tell me how many conversions were made by either team. It seemed like maybe two or three. The defense made a lot of stops, but uh, what a great game. I was a part of that in the, the Auburn, I think, 96, where it was five or six overtimes, and it just seems like one play is going to make or break it. And our seniors, our team, our leadership, uh, they don't flinch, and uh, they, 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 they find a way 14 points down with I don't know, five minutes left, and Carson never blinked, and defense made a stop in the other time. Kirby, what was the message to the team at halftime when you're down 17 nothing? We had to get stops. We, we opened with the first possession of the game. I mean, the first possession of the half. It felt like that was going to be really big for us, and we needed to get momentum. Uh, we had to get stops on defense, and we knew we wouldn't get many possessions because they were going to eat the clock and run the ball. And uh, that was the biggest difference is, is can we make every possession count and just do your job? Because they really had not completely stopped our offense. So uh, it's hard to play that team uh, from behind because they don't give you the ball much. Talking about the seniors, you know, Danny Jackson gets, causes the fumble and gets the sack right there at the very end. He's just uh, talking about very man after the I think that guy came to Georgia on his own without us even recruiting and, and, and to make the plays he's made. That, that, that hit fumble will be one for the ages because uh, he wasn't just hitting a, a normal dude. That guy's, that guy's, a, that guy's a competitor. Um, and a lot of respect for Dan. He didn't even have to come back this year. He debated whether he was going to play football again this year. I think about where we'd be without him. Just uh, a lot of respect for him and his leadership. And, and, and it really, you know, all these kids that, that want to go and transfer and change and do all this, you look at a guy like Dan Jackson, he is what college football is all about, guys. He's not asking for more money. He's not trying to go somewhere else. The guy just loves Georgia. When you were prepared for um, Ole did y'all ever go through eight overtimes in that preparation? No. <laughs> we, uh, we simulate about once every three weeks where we get into the two-point contest. But we typically stop around two or three just because you don't, you know, you, you carry two point plays. You carry a lot of them, but I've never I've never practiced that. Many. A couple weeks ago, before we went and played Texas, we did a, a, an overtime simulation similar to that, and just so the kids know the rules. Uh, we went two point back and forth, but I think we added about eight thousand yards just changing the field. I saw some of y'all up in the front. Figuring out why y'all were sprinting back and forth. Did you know for sure that, that Dan had forced a fumble uh, at the end? Because it was just sitting there. It didn't seem like anybody knew it was just sitting there. I had no idea. Yeah. I, I, I thought they were going to review it and, and flip it until they showed it on the big deal. Yeah. It would have been great if we had scooped and scored it and ran it in, you know. But uh, I didn't know it came out, I think. I thought it just stopped.
you talk a lot about your team not riding the wave of emotions. What do you see from the players as those overtimes are going? As you said, a bunch of them weren't converted. Just how they kept reacting as an overtime. I mean, it, just, it was weird. It seemed like every time somebody failed, they had to go again. I don't know why. It just seemed like we failed. We got to go again. So you had to get over that. And then they would fail, and they had to go again. It was the back to back. It was almost like, I don't know, it, it was a battle of adversity because the hardest thing to do is right after you fail on defense or offense, you got to go right back out there and uh, and change ends. And I, I just don't remember uh, a game like that. You know, out there. Coach, you used one of your two point conversions in the third quarter on that first touchdown. What was the thought process there? Yeah, interesting question. I'm not going to dig real deep in it. It's, it's, it's analytics, and we follow them almost to a T. And uh, what our chart said. So it ended up looking really uh, interesting because you kick an extra point in the game. Kirby Carson's play in the fourth quarter. I could not get much done early. Was playing really well. Back. I thought he played good the whole game. I mean, he had a couple of pressures that, that uh, they did a nice job disguising the pressure. We took a sack. Uh, they got really nice. Pressure package. They do a good job with that. Um, he had some drops again. Um, he doesn't let that frustrate him or stop him. He just continues to make plays. And the, the two-minute drive was really good. He fired a couple of seam routes in, got the ball out to the tight end, made some plays with his legs. Uh, I mean, I have to watch the tape to really know how he played, but I know how he leads. I know how he competes. You said that he wasn't frustrated with his job. Was there was moments where it looked like he was frustrated and he went after him talking. He said that it was okay for him to show that emotion with you frustrated. So how do you keep up with him at any point to make sure that he's checked in and not letting that happen? Or? No, Carson's fine. Carson's not a real emotional guy. I mean, I'm sure he got frustrated. We all get frustrated, but uh, Carson composes himself. He goes and plays the next play. That's all. That's all he could do. He's he's seen it all, been around it. It's not a it's not something that stresses me out. Really. And what else can be done against Mary Patrick to prevent these drops? <laughs> I don't know that we can do anything else on that. I think uh, uh, show confidence in our guys and keep going back to it. That's what we're going to do. Nate Frazier's freshman regular season ends with with a two point try. I mean, just think back to where he was at the beginning of the season. Where's he developed the most, and just what does it mean to see a freshman get a moment? Yeah, he's developed the most of his pass pro. I thought he had a great pass pro pickup tonight. He understood they had a good blitz scheme. He knew who he had to block. He's gained so much confidence because he's had to take so many reps. You know, um, we were without two or three linemen during the week. We lost uh, uh, Monroe. He was not able to, to practice for a couple of days, and Dylan was out, and then they both came back barely for the game. Um, Jared was, was hobbled. The trust was hobbled. We were like the walking wounded out there, We're still trying to get Ernest back. Um, but you know, Trevor's down. There's a lot of moving parts out there for those guys, and Nate has been the glue. He stepped up and played really big and runs really hard. And you know, it makes you wonder if we gave him the ball earlier, we wouldn't have been out there as long. Y'all would have already been home because he, he was going. He was going to score that ball if he got it. Now he was. He hit the hole really hard. We got another game now. We're trying to. So uh, how we handle the next week and tomorrow night? If, if we rest. I mean, all we can do right now is rest. We, we, our guys need a, they need a mental break. They need, uh, they need this day. I mean, tomorrow is one day, but it's a, it's a day that we don't know who we're going to play. Um, they need recovery. This was a really short week. It was a tough week. I remember Tech played on Thursday night in this deal and called us on two days, and that always, you know, you don't usually get that in our league, but you get that when you cross leagues and you move the game up. And, a lot of respect for the way they play, the toughness they played with. Um, and we got to turn around and play a uh, stellar opponent, no matter who it is. Uh, next week, it's going to be physical. And I told the guys in the locker room, you can you can rub your bruises and, 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 and pout and do everything and say, I could have done better, but you better get ready to strap it on and play again. Are you guys expecting to see him final? And how did that throw things off uh, that you didn't find? I didn't throw it out at all. We expected to see Haynes King. We, you know, we thought they might save his red shirt and, and not play. What, what threw it off a little bit was Haynes King ability to throw the ball because everything we've been told is his injury prevented him from throwing it. And you look at the previous two games, and he really didn't. And, you know, there was points in time at NC State that it was tight ball games. They were going to throw it. You could throw it with the guy, right? Well, they trusted it was Philo. So uh, that was, you know, our expectation was they were going to throw it with Philo and then they were going to do the other things. But Haynes came in and he threw the ball well. Um, and really had some 
advantageous looks to throw it on because we had everybody committed to the box. I mean, like we played stuff that I we ain't played since we played the old Georgia Tech. Like, like you had to play them different, and it was so different for our guys. We played defenses we never played, and that made it hard. Like you can't three and out. I mean, three yards, three yards, three yards. Those guys, and you, 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 I mean, they, they, they do a great job. I mean, watching them play Miami, it was like you know, Miami's got some really pretty players out there. They ran the ball. They did it on us. You guys have finished the regular season with a ten and two record. Do you feel like you've done enough to merit inclusion in the college football playoff? I don't get into that. I'm not biting on that. I'm worried about the SEC championship. That's for somebody else to decide. I just, um, I'm proud of our guys. I'm proud of the fight and the grit and the toughness. And that's that's really my focus. I mean, just keep getting better and don't ride the wave of emotion. Because if things went the other way on one of those plays tonight, we'd be playing next week for our for our lives to go in the playoffs, right? So our, our opportunities in front of us, we got to go out and play well and play a good team. Coach, you always talk about what you learn from your team each week. What did you learn from your team this week? That no matter if you got the hardest schedule in the country, hardest schedule probably in the history of Georgia, you keep fighting. You keep fighting. And everybody, you know, wants a shot at you. Those guys played really hard tonight. They had a good game plan. They played well enough to win. I'm talking about Georgia Tech. But our guys found a way to win. And at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. It was one of the longest, one of the longest like post-game interactions that I I just keep it between you and I. I just, you know, we, we, we're both competitors. We have respect for each other. We played in the same era. We played against each other. We recruited against each other. We don't get to share um, thoughts and ideas and, 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 and break and have bread and tea very often. So when we get a chance to talk and show respect to each other, I think being competitive is a hard game. And nobody knows what it's like to sit on that sideline and go through that pain and the the, the, the highs, the lows, the we're gonna win, we're gonna lose, we're gonna win, we're gonna lose. I mean, he, he was emotionally spent and so was I. And we probably know what each other go through, goes through for our fan bases better than anybody. But no man else has been in those shoes uh, had to deal with that and do that. And he, uh, he done a tremendous job turning that program around. And Chauncey Bill is now season. Chauncey got hurt in the last game. Had a uh, foot injury that he was trying to come back from. And he got hurt. He uh, you guys seen anything to decide to go with Brady on the last part of it? Well, it, I mean, as far as like to I hand it off to him, well, it, we had an option to throw it on there. Carson made a good decision. And in most, in most plays that, that we were running at the end, everybody does. It's kind of a you don't want to run a two point play where there's only one option. You're trying to run things that give you multiple options. And they did, and we did. It was interesting because Buster you know, was calling their two points, and he was here so long, and we are talking to our offense back and forth about it. What do you think this is? What do you think he's going to run next? I mean, we have a lot of the same plays uh, in two-point situations. And so it was it was unique. And, um, you know, I was, you know, after the first, after the, the time we ran Carson, which was a, you know, it was a little different call. It was, we thought we'd catch them off balance with all the passes and, and get it and we didn't. You know, I thought it was a, a great call by Mike to go back to what he went to. Because as a defensive guy, we're thinking there's no way you'd run it there. But uh, people were getting worn down. People were getting tired. We weren't, we weren't getting open. So that kid's got an electric ability. He hit the whole heart. And I, I guess we blocked the right because we didn't want to get up in there. Kirby, what did you think of the two-point shootout as a way to decide over time, as opposed to playing it out the way it had used to be? Well, if they played it out like it used to be, they'd still be out there. That's <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> they changed it. Um, and you know, that was a long, I mean, I went there, it was played 84 plays. We played 84 plays on our defense, and then our offense had 69, which that's probably our own fault. But when you go to overtime, man, it could be really, I was part of that game. And the reason they changed that was because of that. I mean, we got to play another game next week. So somebody sitting out there like, keep playing. Keep more snaps you play, the more, you know, we're a beat up football team, guys. We are beat up. We need to get well. And it's not going to happen this week. So we got to keep getting better. Have we one more question? What does it say about your defense specifically that with all the different calls and the success Tech was able to have early that they were still able to make those plays when they needed to in the fourth quarter? It says they gave up. 260 yards rushing, that's what it says. That's nothing to ever be proud of, okay? 
but they made some huge stops when they had to. And I don't know if we played poorly on defense tonight as much as Georgia Tech and their quarterback really played well. Okay, they are hard to stop. That's tough to stop. That quarterback is tough. He does a great job. But when you add the throwing, we're giving them great looks to throw it. I mean, great looks. They're one on one all the time. You know, people don't play us that way because we don't, we don't have that style of quarterback. So give them a lot of credit and give our kids a lot of credit. And I can't say enough, guys, about this senior class. You can write anything you want about this game. Those seniors walk off that field undefeated at home and against Tech. That's hard to do. Thanks, Coach. Coach.